So we're about to do something a little stupid, maybe. We're gonna try and walk 50 miles from up here in the Hudson Valley to the southern tip of Manhattan. I've spent a lot of my life studying human evolution, and people are always arguing, what is it that makes humans special? Is it our language use, our tool use, our weird big brains? But to me, one of the kind of defining characteristics of humans has always been just how weirdly good we are at walking. So along this 50 mile trek, I want to kind of highlight all the ways that our skeletons have evolved to be really good at bipedal walking. Okay, off we go. So that man peeing over there is my husband, who's kind enough to indulge me on our crazy adventures. Everyone say hi to Ned. His weird little bag. <laughs> you look like a stormtrooper. A little past 5.30 in the morning. All right, here we go. Let's do this. There's that one dude fishing down there that was subjected to my yeah, YouTube he, intro. So it's gonna look like this for the next 17 miles or so. So this is actually the third time we're attempting this hike. The first one we really didn't take seriously whatsoever, but the second one we did this path. Just a few things went wrong. It got really rainy, had bad blisters. We started five or so miles into the woods. So I think we have learned a lot. We've implemented those changes. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Here's our first bit of aqueduct infrastructure. So one way to see how our skeleton has adapted to bipedalism is to compare our bones to those of our closest living relative, chimpanzees. So one key difference between our foot and that of chimpanzees is our massive heel bone, which kind of absorbs, absorbs the shock of each step. I'm helped along by these running shoes, which have a nice big heel on them, which hopefully will save my feet enough for this walk. So one of the other differences between us and chimpanzees is our big toe, which is straight in line with the direction we're walking. Chimpanzees are splayed out, so they can actually use their feet for grasping. Humans can't use their feet for grasping. It's completely adapted to locomotion, to, to walking. Unless you're one of those circus freaks that can pick up like socks with their feet. So unlike other apes, we use that big toe to push ourselves forward with every step. It's kind of amazing how efficient we are at it. For a similarly sized quadruped, so animal that walks on all fours like a chimpanzee, we use like something like 25% of the energy that they do. We're incredibly efficient walkers. And then one of the other things we have is a longitudinal arch in our foot. So chimpanzees are flat-footed. We have this arch that again helps absorb some of that shock and transfer the energy into the next step. Tasty chips. <laughs> God, you're so small. <laughs> From up here, you just look like a little tiny person. These stairs? Yeah. This is bullshit. This is the Austining. No, it's the Austining weir. Yeah. So we're now in Austining, where the aqueduct passes through this town and actually goes over a river. It's kind of a weird thing to think about. Water bridge going over water. I'm feeling pretty fresh. How about you? 5.22 miles. Just under two hours. 10% of the walk done. If Bo Miles were here, he'd remove that. And then like run a marathon with it or whatever. So, moving off the body. The next thing we have to talk about are the knees. Chimpanzees can walk bipedally, they're just not very good at it. If you ever see a chimp walk on two legs, they rotate their body a lot. It's super inefficient. So one of the reasons for that is their knee. So in chimpanzees, their leg goes straight down, meaning their center of gravity swings back and forth when they walk. In humans, our femur or thigh bone comes in at an angle, and then our lower leg goes straight down. This weird angle is responsible ultimately for causing a lot of people knee pain, including me. But it also means that our center of gravity stays closer to the midline, making our walking much more efficient. Another reason humans are such efficient walkers is our long legs. So they kind of move as like a pendulum and you kind of fall forward onto the next one. Unfortunately for me, short people are much less efficient walkers than these long-legged freaks. Yeah, that makes sense. Nice fanny pack, loser. Thank you. So we're right around the 9.6 mile mark, I think. Yeah, yeah 9.6. So, you know, approaching 20%. I think this is a good enough time to give a little mini lecture on bipedalism and human evolution. So we're working our way up. So now up to the pelvis. So in the pelvis on a chimpanzee, it doesn't, you know, have much weight bearing on it. But in a human, where our torso's reoriented upright, all of our organs and viscera and shit is now sitting on that pelvis. So in humans, unlike chimpanzees, the pelvis is bowl-shaped and helps kind of support all the gunk in our, in our abdomen. So another way that humans and chimp chimpanzees differ is that humans alone have big glutes. So 
the glutes pull our legs back when we're walking or like going up steps. On flat level ground like this, they're not actually doing that that much. Besides looking fine. All right, that's all I know about pelvises and butts. There's the Tappan Zee. Excuse me, it's the Mario D. Cuomo Bridge. I'm in pretty good spirits, I gotta say, for for 11.3 miles in. <laughs> Great name, Sleepy Hollow Horseman. Mm. So yeah, this is where we got stuck for a while because our feet were hurting so bad. So we ducked in here. I think we had food, but yeah, I sat there for a long while, my legs up. Doing better this time. We just crested over the 15 minute mark, sorry, 15 mile mark, 15.16. So on the whole, pretty good. Bottoms of the feet aren't really loving the hard ground at this point, but it's to be expected, I guess. By continuing on the tour of the human skeleton, we're up now to the spine. So the chimpanzee spine is C-shaped. It has like this kind of hunchback curve to it, this arch. But when the humans flipped to being upright, all of a sudden you had this unstable vertebral column sitting on top of a, of a pelvis. And so that C-shaped spine of the chimpanzee morphed into two different curves. So on the lower back, a curve in down at the, at the lumbar part of the spine, and then a curve the other way up at the thoracic. So you end up having an S-shaped curve to the spine, which kind of gives it increased stability when it's balanced over, over the pelvis. There's the palisades. Oh. 20.05. Oh, yeah, for sure. Seven hours, 11 minutes. Yep. Boom. That's pretty good. This is by far the worst surface we've had to walk on. Where are we right now? We're at Hastings on Hudson on the way to North Coast Yonkers. Now get your shit together, Hastings on Hudson. Do better. I got a net in there for scale. Gotta. Gotta. It's like a tree fell on it. Oh, hey, dear. 22 down. It's official. That means there's what? 28 more to go. 1.43 p.m. At it for eight hours and change. Still feeling like surprisingly okay, tentatively. Don't want to jinx it, of course. But anyway, to distract myself from the foot pain and the torturous walk, I finished up the toe to head atlas of the ways that our skeleton has been impacted by bipedalism. So quadrupeds like these deer here, you can see their skull sits suspended, kind of cantilevered off of their, their spine. They have a lot of muscle attachments to hold the head up. But humans have shifted around so that our skull is balanced on top of the spinal column. So the way that the spinal column the spinal cord enters into our brain case had to change. Bye, dear. So the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees was a quadruped. So as we discussed, the spine was like this. The head was upright, obviously, looking out. So that means that the spinal column entered into the brain case from, from the back. The spine obviously has to enter into the cranium, so there's a big hole. It's called the foramen magnum, which is Latin for big hole. When the ancestor of humans moved from being a quadruped to upright, the placement of our skull relative to our spine changed. Now the spinal column, rather than from entering in the back, entered from the bottom because our skull was kind of perched on top of the spine. So that means that big hole, foramen magnum, moved from being in the back to being tucked underneath the skull. So a sure way that you found a biped if you have a skull, is to see the placement of that big hole. So many people's entire careers have been spent arguing about the position of that big hole in skulls that have been deformed because they want it to be on the bottom side because they want to have a you know, human ancestor, not a chimpanzee ancestor, a gorilla ancestor. Juneteenth parade. Three and a half. Almost halfway. We're at 25.6 with what is it, nine and a half hours? Closing in on a marathon. Closing in on a marathon. My only complaint is that my 
pinky toe was very unhappy. Yep. This is very nice. It is very nice. Oh bother. Oh bother. Oh bother. Oh bother. Oh, bother. 26.2. I think this symbol up here means we finally made it to New York City. Oh, God, my pinky toe. No, you're good. Oh. You're good. Oh, no. Oh, city of New York. It's definitely city of New York. Oh. Parts, parts of it's like you've never. City of New York. It's El Blumbito. <laughs> and now we're in the city. Yay! We've gone 27.3. 27 point four, according to mine. Yeah, 0.4. 27.4. That's a subway we could just take home right now. <laughs> 31.21 miles. We're crossing from the Bronx into Manhattan. Very good dog. So we're at 110th Street. We've gone 37.5 on a cod here. Three quarters. So three quarters of the way. 35%, but I just have no more gas in the tank, unfortunately. So I don't want to do any permanent damage and be hobbling around for a week. So it's a bummer not make 50 miles, but so it goes. I think it's the right call. So anyway, let's go right. home. Thus ends our long walk. Yet again, my old foot injury stopped us before we hit the 50 mile finish line. Oh, thank God. Thank you. But it's still a testament to how amazing humans are at walking that two schlubby New Yorkers with no training and minimal preparation were able to up and walk 40 miles in a day. Please subscribe for more evolutionary biology videos. I have one, for instance, on whether beards evolved to make men sexier, in which I make poor Ned shave his face. Look at this bullshit. It's supposed to be perfectly flat. Been pretty damn flat. Now we got this fucking hill to climb. It's been a lovely, fast-paced uh, hike through through mosquito swamp. Green's like the dumbest color you can pick for a blaze. Hey, buddy. Good morning. Hey, buddy. So, Homo sapiens, humans, unlike our chimpanzee and great ape relatives, have big asses, like a thick dump truck asses, like a mom in a Pixar movie. Now, do you have anything in your back pocket, back left? Back left? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I didn't sign up for this. <laughs>